Hi, I'm Danielle, and welcome to This Enchanted House. This week, we're going to talk about cooking shows, and in particular, this is a review of James May's new cooking show, James May, O oh Cook. Just, I'll start with the bat. I'm a really big James May fan, and this was a really great cooking show. I want to talk about cooking shows in general to get to why I think this show is such an exceptional show. Uh, and we have to kind of look at the history of cooking shows, because cooking shows haven't been around forever. They're something that comes with the advent of television. Um, and early cooking shows, at least in the U.S., were largely on PBS, and they featured, like, Julie Child, uh, The Galloping Gourmet, Yan Can Cook. And they kind of set the format, and it was basically someone cooking on camera explaining what they were doing, because as PBS, it was had to have edu had educational value. Um, and the production quality varied a little bit because there was, you know, it was public broadcasting doesn't have quite the budget that, like, or at least back then didn't have the budget that, like, a, um, like an NBC or CBS would have had. So there's some compromise, and we see the shows are carried largely on the personality of the cook, but we kind of get to see them mess up a little bit. I mean, there's some of the tricks we're used to where, like, oh, this takes an hour, but through the magic of my oven, it's done type thing are established then. But for the most part, cooking shows were very niche, um, and they weren't, like, seen as big things necessarily, necessarily, though the people who did those, you know, published lots of cookbooks and become famous in their own right. Um, it's not until we get to, um, Food Network that we see the cooking show change. Um, early Food Network shows, if you go look at them, are a lot like those PBS shows, and, you know, they're, they really depend on the personality of the person cooking more than anything else. And, um, you can kind of see that with, like, um, like, Giada is very different than, um, Bobby who, Flay, who's very different than Emerald Lagasse, who was, you know, Emerald Lagasse's, like, big personality, um, who's very different than Nelton Brown. They have very different personalities, and even though they're basically kind of doing the same thing, Though Alton Brown's a little different, I'm going to get to why later. The 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 shows carry on their personality, um, obviously, they, and they know what they're talking about for the most part. But at this point, they also start to get a little more polished. These have a cable budget now, and which is a little better than um, what a public broadcasting station would have had back earlier. And we start to see more polish. We start to see less of the mistakes. Like, the mistakes get edited out a lot more. And it's more, it's very more polished. Um, and as Food Network Channel goes on, these shows get more polished, and they almost come up, become formulaic, and the personality doesn't matter, so they try to erase kind of the personality a little bit. Um, oh, Rachel Ray was another one. Very big personality, who's not really, you see, you notice a lot of these personality types have kind of disappeared. Of course, Food Network's gone, gone reality show, which is the, like, second to last death knell before you just start airing random crap, I guess, and then just become a random crap channel. Um, but, so, Food Network really changed how we look at, f um, cooking shows, and they influenced cooking shows in other places like Britain and things that would be produced for other channels. Um, and it's the idea that this is that this is very polished thing, and you even see something like Food Network Star, where the early thing, you get something like Guy Fieri, who's a big personality. To, I don't know who won the last couple of them, honestly. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I kind of stopped watching after the first season or so, because, you know, it was more reality show than anything else. Um, so I've never been a really huge fan of cooking shows. Sometimes I'll, that's some, one of those things I can put on in the background while I'm doing something else. Or if I find a recipe online and it's been demonstrated, I'll go watch it so I can see, like, if there's anything technique-wise that they do that maybe it's not mentioned in the recipe, but you see them doing it, you're like, oh, that's how that works. And that's where cooking shows are really great, is it's a great way to learn techniques and see them demonstrated. Um, the exceptions to the, cook like, professionally produced cooking shows I, I like would probably be um, Alton Brown's Good Eats and Christine McConnell's um, show she did for Netflix, uh, The Curious World of Christine McConnell. Um, which I'm still mad they canceled. None, but so both these shows are different, and rather than just have a personality up there explaining things, um, well, Alan Brown's still a personality, and if you watched his YouTube channel, he is a personality. But um, his shows, each there each episode kind of was like a story, like, and there'd be like skits and puppets and. So, 
explanations and demonstrations using models that remind you of, like, you know, a science show. And he, he kind of melded all that together, so it was very different than any cooking show you saw, and I don't think anyone's kind of replicated it since. Though Kristen A. McConnell's kind of close, um, well, her show was more like, um, it was literally if Henson Studios did a cooking show, um, there's Muppets, and there's a storyline, and the cooking bits kind of fit into the storyline, but she, also she's mostly baking too, and also she still does, she has a YouTube and a Patreon channel, and I highly recommend it if you want to check her out. But they're kind of like these weird exceptions. You know, it's kind of this polished cooking show, and now that Food Network kind of um, abandoned that, cooking shows have mostly moved to the web. And now we, um, and a lot of the most, once again, we're seeing personalities, uh, like, you know, Binging with Batfish, or Anne Rogers' How to Cook, or um, the Bon Appetit channel, um, may it rest in peace, because there's a whole thing that happened with that, and it, it's not going to be the same going forward, but it was very personality-driven. Um, now, the first two, they're still kind, they're still YouTube-polished, and um, but they kind of share some of the mistakes they made and how to correct them when they come across them, and um, they kind of go into other areas of content and stuff. They don't always, like, Andrew does those wonderful debunking videos, and Babish has expanded out, and now he's got, like, Solo doing this, this sort of... Uh, can solo cooking show, which is great, which is another great cooking show. But really, the one that kind of stands out for me is the Bon Appetit channel, because originally their shows were very much like polished cooking shows, like you would see on Food Network. But they were shorter segments, which you know makes it easier to you get sit through ten minutes as opposed to like a half hour. But then they did the show with uh, It's Alive with Bradley on, and that kind of changed their format, and it really took it to something that was really entertaining and informative where you're watching these people cook and you're watching the mistakes as they make them. It's not like they, they're saying, oh, by the way, this might happen and show you that. This is like, they're cooking like, oh, no, this has happened. And they have to go ask a friend for help. And they have to go ask other people's opinions. And it's this whole community of cooking. And it's really was something kind of special. But it kind of deconstructed the cooking show a little bit and made it a little less, oh, look at me, I am this cooking god and you can follow what I do and say, hey, this is how you cook and this is really what happens when you cook and... You can mess up. So which brings me to James May. Now, um, if you aren't familiar with James May, he's probably most notable for um, Top Gear and the Grand Tour where he, uh, show he co-hosts with uh, Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond. But he has his own, this has done a bunch of his own series of shows, including Toy Story, not the movie, but like a exploration of the history of toys and doing really cool things with toys. Um, he's done um, some hist the history of the people's car, where he talks about the everyday cars that we drive, as opposed to you know the the, ra the racetrack type stuff that they do on Top Gear more, or the supercars. And he's done James May's Man Lab, which is you know it's it's kind of supposed to be like doing manly things, but with science and stuff. But it's really fun. And one thing I've noticed with all those shows, especially uh, Man Lab. And, um, oh, also his newest series on his, not, not his new series, but his, uh, he did his travelogue series on Japan, is that he really likes to break the fourth wall, which is something you don't necessarily see as much with presenter, presented documentary type shows. Like, we see it in fiction, like, oh, the character's talking to the audience. Well, what James likes to do a lot is he likes to point out that this is a production and this has been edited. And he says, well, this is where the edit will be. Or he will point, he'll talk about what the cameraman's doing or his director's doing. Um, and he all, he kind of breaks the fourth wall in this way that reminds you, this is pol this is kind of a polished production. And it helps kind of ground, his, ground, his, ground what he does. So he's brought that sensibility to a cooking show and it's great. Um, he starts off saying he doesn't know how to cook, or he's he's a beginner cook basically. He um, he's also started a YouTube channel called Food Tribe where they explore food, and if you go watch it, um, there's things like Pimp My Beans where he um, is taking a can of beans, and well, it's um, one of his production crew, Lucy, who does it now, and he comes and tastes it, but she takes the beans and just a can of grocery store beans and like adds stuff and tries to make them more exciting. Um, there's one where he visits foods from his childhood, like sandwiches and things, and try and he plays around with food. Um, and even that's... And he's really deconstructing how food shows work. And one of the great things about 
food tribe is you actually usually you have these really polished very fancy kitchens either they look very professional or it's like high end with you know multiple ovens and the big knobs and even um for food tribe they call it the bunker and they've got like a toaster oven and a hot plate <laughs> And even when he talks, even when he, his show, he says, you know, this is a very fancy kitchen and I've got all this stuff here and you might not have that, but you still can do this. And that's kind of his, the message of the show is that he's trying to make cooking accessible and it really works for the most part. Um, once again, he breaks the, he breaks this fourth wall in so many ways. He talks about how the kitchen's fancy, he, you, you see the crew filming him a lot of the time, and he talks about, you know, um, when they do the beauty shots of the food, and he said, he, 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 you know, he complains, he's like, hurry up, get the beauty shot, because it's going to go cold, and we want to eat it, we want to taste how it feels, and if it goes cold, it's not going to be as good. Um, but the real treasure is his um, home economist, Nikki. Now, he makes a big deal of her, because... The reality is, for most of these very polished cooking shows, um, there's production assistants, and even Bon Appetit had this happening, where they have people in the background who help and get things ready and prep things and have like the next, you know, like the next stage of the dish ready to go. And they step in when the if the host is having problems to help fix the problem. But you never see any of that. Well, he has that, and she's Nikki's like his co-star basically. And even to kind of lamp to to lampshade this a bit, he has he she lives in the cupboard in the back whenever there's a problem he comes gets her out. Um but he has her try all the food and you know judge him and say, you know, you're the expert here. How does this taste? Did I do this right? Um he's always asking for help, which is a really great thing to see in a cooking show. You never I like I said Bon Appetit had that and that was really what made I think accessible to a lot of people and I think this show does the same thing where he's asking for help from an expert and it doesn't feel make it doesn't lessen his authority any because he knows his authority comes as a presenter and someone who presents things uh the dishes are not the simplistic fare of food tribe they're actually cooking he's actually cooking things and sometimes he's trying things for the first time and he's following the recipe and he even you know, shows at one point, you know, he's got, you know, he doesn't look like it, but he's got a drawer down there and he's checking to see what he's doing before he does it. Um, he talks about timing. He says, well, this is going to edit it to look like I did it all at once, but really these are, these are things I did separately and this took a lot, this took a lot of time, but we're going to, because we only have so much time on the show, we're going to kind of show it all going at once. He, he points these things out and it makes the show much more accessible. Um, the recipes look good for the most part. Um, I'm, he, I'm, he does fish pie, which I'm not a big. Fi I honestly can't stand fish, but he does like a. He he tries to include ve vegetarian and vegan options. Um, he it's mostly it's very British centered, and so you know if you're watching as as, as as someone in the U.S., like the measurements are in metric, and he uses British terms for things, and some of the things are very British specific, and he makes spot like he makes spotted dick, and he makes all the requisite jokes for it. Um, but it was it's a very well done show um i recommend all his shows honestly if you just want something to binge while you're stuck at home because lockdowns are coming around again and corona's popping up higher again so you know something to watch uh, most he, all his stuff's on amazon on on amazon prime so it was a really enjoyable show there's a cookbook coming out with it um and i'm supposed to be getting it when it comes out um, maybe I'll do a review of it too. I'd love to start doing more cooking book and cooking reviews as part of this because you know, one of the things this channel's supposed to be about is lifestyle. So here's my dip more into lifestyle. Um, but I recommend um, I recommend James Mayo Cook on Amazon Prime. It's a great show. Um, makes it's very accessible, um, and I, I think it makes it makes the point pretty clear that you know anyone with a little help. And a little, you know, someone to help them along and teach them can cook. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you watch the show or if you're a James May fan or if your thoughts on cooking shows in general. So leave me in comments below. Um, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos. Uh, if you want to check me out on um, social media, I have links below for my Instagram Facebook and Twitter. I also have a Patreon. Um, currently, I have no one as a patron, so I would love just if you wanted to give me a dollar a month to help support this channel, help me upgrade some of what I'm doing, help me 
expand because I have lots of ideas I want to explore and I'm just getting started so you can get in on the ground floor. I would be hugely grateful. So um, until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.